Hello, students of mine, you wonderful people that you are. Dr. Matt is here. More about acid base titrations. In this quick little video, I'm just going to talk about the curves and sort of how they generate from what we talked about earlier about how we make and do acid base titrations. I have two scenarios for you. If you can think about it, we have weak and strong acids, weak and strong bases. So all the various combinations of that would create a bunch of different curves. We're only going to talk about two. The first is strong acid, strong base. In this case, we have a strong base in the burette right here with strong acid down in the beaker. Alrighty, so we have a strong base being added to the strong acid. Initially, the pH is only that of a strong acid, so the pH is going to be really low. Once we add a little bit of base dripping out of the burette, then we're going to get into scenario B here where you're going to have a little bit of base added into this beaker, but not enough. The moles of the acid is still moles greater than the moles of the base, so pretty much you're only going to have strong acid left, so the pH is still that of a strong acid. If we keep rolling with this, eventually we're going to get to the point that the moles of the acid equal the moles of the base. That's our specific little equivalence point. That's when our indicator is going to change color, and since if it's a strong acid with a strong base, neither of which are going to remain, the pH is going to be neutral. The pH is going to be 7. If we drip in a little bit more strong base out of this burette, then basically we're dripping strong base into a neutral solution. So we're only going to have hydroxide in there. We're going to have a pH of a strong base. Alrighty. If we graph these up, then what we're looking at is this curve here. Let me, a is down here at the bottom where you only have strong base. We get B going on. We get a little bit more, I mean, strong acid at A, more strong acid at B. Once it's all consumed as strong acid, we come up to C here, which is our equivalence point at pH 7. And then we add a little bit more, and we find up here strong base. What we have is the curve, the shape of the curve is data points for each little bit of base that we added, and we can generate that curve out of it. So every time we put in a drop of base, a little drop of base, whoops, drop of base with a little drop base, more base, more base, more base, more base, and record that pH every time, that's what our curve would generate to be. Scenario number two, weak acid with a strong base. Same idea all over again, except now that we have a weak acid in here, okay, the pH might be a little bit higher because we have pH of a weak acid instead of a strong acid. We're then going to drip some strong base into that weak acid. The base is going to react with the acid, and that will generate a conjugate base. Because remember, if we have HA plus hydroxide, they're going to react, and that's going to make A negative in water. More about that when we do the problems, but we basically are going to have a buffer there in that solution. We move along. Once the moles of the weak acid equals the moles of the base, you're not going to have a neutral solution anymore because you're going to have that conjugate base hanging out. So now our pH is going to be that of a weak base rather than that of neutral. Same gig happens once we add more base than acid. We're going to have strong base in there. The strong base is really going to control the pH because the only way A negative, the, weak, the conjugate base, is going to add the pH as if it generates hydroxide. Well, the weak base is never going to generate more hydroxide than there is hydroxide, because hydroxide is hydroxide. So you're going to have the pH of a strong base. Graphing that up, we have our scenario here. We start off with just, I'm going to switch colors here. We start off with just the weak acid. Once we generate our buffer, our AHA and our A negative, that's this region in here. We're going to generate the buffer. If you look carefully at the curve, you should see that the curve goes up a little bit. The other curve, if I can scroll, the other curve stayed flat. And that's the difference. You know you're starting with something weak. The curve goes up and then it flex. Alrighty. This region right in here is our buffer region. The middle of that will be our pKa. Because in the middle of the buffer, the concentration of the acid will equal that of the conjugate base and that will be our pKa. Once we're all done through and we're at point C here, then we're going to have the equivalence point. That's going to be higher than neutrality because it's a weak base. It could be like 9 or something. Anyway, once we then add a little bit more strong base, we get up to the top of our curve. Those are our two curves. I'd like to compare everything in this giant diagram that I have here. That's way too big. Let me shrink that down a bit. In this curve, I have 
bunch of different curves. We first start off with our strong acid. Okay, that's the red line. We have a weak acid in green, another weak acid in blue. You can see that they in black and black. So we have a couple weak acids there. If you notice, the green, blue, and red line all meet at the exact same, I'm sorry, green, red, and purple line all meet at the same equivalence point, and they all therefore use the exact same amount of base to reach that equivalence point, which means they both have the same concentration of acid. The blue line needs more base. So therefore, it needs more. It has a strong concentration of acid. Because remember, the moles of the base equal the mole of the acid. Okay, that's an important little thing to know. And then if you look at the shapes of the curves, the middle of the buffer region, middle of the buffer region, middle of the buffer region, that's the pKa. Okay, so that's a pKa, that's a pKa, that's a pKa. So if you look at it, then value of the pKa is going up with each of these. So you can tell that this is the stronger acid because its Ka will be greatest. This has to be the weakest acid because its Ka is the smallest. Everything we learned about Ka's, Ka's and Kb's and pKa and pKb and all that, they are still at play here in these curves. Well, I hope you like it. Learn it. Love it. Have a great day. I'll talk to you later.